Good morning, everybody. It is time for the return of the Monday Morning Race Review brought to you by Wild Elephant Sparkling Tea. Oh my goodness, so great to be back to get you caught up in the world of motorsports and want to welcome Wild Elephant Sparkling Tea to the program. And you're saying to yourself, what is this all about? How, how do Wild Elephants and Tea sponsor a racing program? Well, we are going to show you right now. Ron Adipatu is the man behind Wild Elephant Racing. No, he doesn't race wild elephants. He races Lamborghinis. There's Ron right there. His family-owned tea company, Elephant Tea, premium quality tea, both leaf and sparkling can tea, takes his funds and he funnels them back to help wild elephant conservation in Sri Lanka. He uses racing to to promote his product and to save the elephants at the same time. His cars actually look like cans of sparkling tea. He is passionate about tea. He's passionate about animal conservation and he's passionate about racing. This guy could be my new best friend. Now, you're going to have a chance to meet him in the upcoming weeks and find out his whole story, which is really cool. But he is the reason that the Monday Morning Race Review is back on the air here on CW Iowa 23 during Iowa Live. So we thank Ron and his entire company for that. Now, how about we get to some of the action from motorsports around the area? Let's start over at Boone Speedway, shall we? Here are the results from Boone on Saturday night. It's the 15th of August. Uh, McBurney, uh, Logue, and Yaw all all win in the modified uh, sport mods and the mod lights. And then uh, we have uh, Mike Smith, Donovan Smith, and uh, uh, Benichek uh, from uh, Durant, Iowa, all winning uh, in their respective divisions in the hobby stocks, stock cars, and the sport compacts as well. So uh, congratulations, everybody that got out and had a chance to race there. Now, something else that was going on on Saturday night, it was the culmination of the Capitani Classic after a three-day event. Uh, it was a $50,000 to win this race on Saturday night. The crowd was limited to 7,000. Tickets were sold out. Kyle Larson won on Thursday night. David Gravel wins on Friday night for the what they call the one and only. But then the 15 mile race, 30 laps. This is the Capitani Classic. Watch Kyle Larson in the front row. Pop a wheelie here. He gets on the throttle going into turn one at the main event on Saturday night over at Knoxville Raceway. Uh, you see, you know, Gravel there battling along with him and actually uh, Reitzel uh, from Texas there first lap, but Larson just dominates this entire race and comes around turn number four. Kyle Larson leads every single lap and pockets the 50 thousand dollars. That's like his 26th win, if I'm not mistaken, 26th or 27th sprint car win since returning to sprint cars full time. There are the results uh, from the event. Kyle Larson wins. David Gravel finishes in second. Uh, you know, Logan finishes in third. Carl uh, Carson finishes in fourth. And look at down the road here. Uh, Austin McCarl finishes in eighth. Terry McCarl finishes in 23rd. Shots started at 24th. He finishes in 12th place. Well, folks, uh, we do realize what happened when it came Came to uh, the storm that rolled through our entire state last Monday. Marshalltown was in the center of the bullseye once again, believe it or not, and it destroyed Marshalltown Speedway. We had a chance to talk with Toby Cruz and ask him how the racetrack and Marshalltown was. The town hasn't recovered from the tornado, and now we had 106 mile hour winds roll through the, the town and and uh, it's just a mess. I mean, the people were just devastated. And uh, the first time we, we dodged it at the fairgrounds, but we were not so lucky this time as the, pretty much the whole city was just consumed by this. Now, what were your first thoughts when you first rolled up onto the fairgrounds where Marshalltown Speedway is when you got to the gate? Just sick. You know, I, I saw it. I couldn't even get into the gate because there were trees down blocking the gate. We had to come in uh, through one of the side gates. And uh, literally, Bob brought you to tears. You look at the entire fairgrounds, all the trees that were down. And I'd heard reports of light poles down, catwalks down. I thought, there's no way. And uh, the catwalk was literally uprooted. And there was a two foot by three foot concrete footings that it pulled out of the ground. Um, the lights that we lost physically on the racetrack, we lost 23 of the lights. And there's 46 that light the whole racetrack. So we lost half the lights that uh, light up the track. And that's our number one goal. And we're, we're dealing with contractors, lighting companies, trying to, if we get the lights done, we can race. The rest might not be done, but, um, and then people are dealing with critical issues. So just trying to get contractors out there and insurance companies, the, and the power, we don't even have full power at their fairgrounds almost a week later. And it's, it's been literally a nightmare. 
uh, do we have any kind of idea if uh, we're okay, and, and say maybe by the end of August, or are we get, hopefully going to be racing by this Friday? Well, if, if we had a small miracle happen, uh, we're, we're working with the company on some big portable lights because the small, the small portable lights, they just don't go high enough. They'd be right in the racer's eyes. We don't have room. You'd need about eight of them. So that's not an option. We're, uh, we have located some. They're actually in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The cost is high. We're working with the insurance company. If we could pull that off, we would be going this Friday. If not, um, it'll be another week or so. Um, and so we, I wanted to have answers this past Wednesday. We work on it daily, but you know what it's like trying to get uh, deal with the people. Everybody's so swamped right now. And uh, so ultimately, we hope to have a, a definitive answer tomorrow because if, if we're getting these uh, portable lights in, like I said, they're coming out of Baton, Baton Rouge, so they've got to make the trip. And they said, if we, could, if we can get them covered, insurance and, and uh, with ourselves, um, they'd be up and running by noon on Friday. But uh, there's a lot of hoops to get through to see if that'll happen here on Monday. All right. Another option, uh, Toby, that I know so was being kicked around by some of the racers. I know it, we love racing on Friday nights at Marshalltown. It's become a tradition for so many people. Is there uh, an option possibly down the road of moving the race and having it in the daytime so you don't need the lights? And you said you have limited electricity so you can have a scoreboard and things like that. Is that a possibility? I just, um, I'm not a big fan of the day racing. You know, it ends up being so dusty, dry, one lane. Um, that would be a worst case scenario. You know, we've had some generous offers from, uh, you know, Independence, Mike over at Stewart, um, Todd up at Webster City. Hey, if you need to use the racetrack, but a lot of our racers, they, they you know, they like Marshalltown. That's home and that's the one night a week they race. So we, we, it's great having that option, but we'd force them to travel. And so um, we're, we're going nonstop every day trying to come up with a plan. But people have asked about the, you know, the day racing, but it's not my number, not my number one favorite thing to look at. All right. So uh, nobody was injured over at Marshalltown Speedway on Monday. Is that correct? That's correct. And that was uh, Rod, we have a retired gentleman that helps us. And he weathered the storm sitting out there in the concession stand the whole time. And he was calling me. And when it got done, uh, I was already en route, had damage at my house. We had damage at, uh, at our restaurant there in Boone. And it's like one thing after another. But I was on the road to check out the racetrack. I could not. Uh, Rod, there's no way all that's done. And man, he was he was spot on, unfortunately. What about the grandstands? Were those uh, in decent shape or did they get this damaged as well? Fortunately, they uh, they survived. So the, the catwalk, a bunch of fencing. Um, we've had the folks out. We've got quotes waiting on quotes to come back on all the fencing issues we have. But we could put up some temporary fence. Uh, we could go without the catwalk. So if we can get our light problems solved, um, that's the number one goal right now that we're working nonstop on. But like I said, hopefully by Monday, Monday late afternoon, early evening, we'll have uh, somewhat of an answer. And it's a, it's a stressful situation. We had generators running just to keep the concession stand going this past week for, you know, all week long. And it's, uh, it's just been one thing after another. All right. So it's a matter of illuminating Marshalltown Speedway. If we can get that task accomplished, then it's a game on and green flag racing on Friday. That's the game plan, right, Toby? That is the game plan. So we'll uh, cross our fingers, say our prayers, and see what happens and uh, shoot for some good news come Monday. Right. Also, 104th running of the Indy 500 Sunday, and an Andretti is on the pole for the first time in 30 years. Marco Andretti is on the pole for the Indy 500, 231.085 mile per hour for a four-lap average. So we wish them the very best at Indy next week.